we would like to know more about Mita Branham. Was she really this person who stayed in the background? What was her life like after William Branham died, and what did she do, and where did she live, and when did she die? You know, my family was very close to the Branham family. My aunts and uncles spent a great deal of time in the Branham home in Jeffersonville and then also the Branham home in Tucson. And, you know, <laughs> this question is from, I'm certain this was from a person who was in the message and they're, they're more curious about did she believe in the same way that the message believes today. That's the, really, I'm trying to read this question and read the heart of it because... How do you answer a question? We would like to know. I'd like to know more about you, Charles. <laughs> where, do, where do you begin, right? You could go on for five hours and talk about Charles. So for me to Branham, you know, I can say that, <clears throat> and it's evident from the pictures, you can tell that she wasn't as invested in how the cult progressed into a cult. She was a different person, I think, than than what the cult has presented her as. And I can say that with some certainty because of the way in which my family described her. Can that be documented? None of it can. I mean, this this whole question can't be documented. So I'm, I'm kind of straying into the hearsay category, which I do avoid. But what can be documented, if you read Sarah Branham's letter, it gives you some insight into the way Mita thought about the cult in general, and how she tried to dis distance herself from it. The cult had different versions, as we've examined in this podcast. It was a latter rain message that after William Branham died, it transitioned into a legacy cult, a legacy message. I don't see her, at least from what I know about her, I don't see her as joining into the legacy cult. She was more about you know, when he was alive, she, that version of the message, the probably not even the last version of a stage persona, but shortly before that, before he appears to have completely lost her mind, I think she was more invested in that, as I understand her, then her whole world was shattered. When William Branham was diagnosed, and he mentions this on recording about being diagnosed with an incurable mental health disorder, her world was shattered. I mean, his life began to change. The cult began to change. It all became more destructive. And she's caught in the middle of this mess. Uh, that's how I see her as, as being. But there's no real way to answer this question other than, you know, I, I've heard these things and that's, that's really all I can share. Right, John. And, and, it's the same for me. You know, there's not a lot of documentation out there on Mita because obviously everything in the cult is around her husband, William Branham. So there's just not a lot on her. Um, now, we, we do have video of her, right, in the, in the 20th Century Prophet video. Uh, we have a little bit here and there. But for the most part, you know, everything we would know or say about her is just things that have been uh, repeated to us. Now, she she passed away in 1981. Right. So, you know, it, there's not a whole lot of uh, overlap, you know, with her lifetime and ours to be able to, to give too much information. But um, she we you know, we've I've heard quite a bit about her from people who did know her. Um, I, I would say she was William uh, Billy Paul's babysitter back in the, uh, you know, the early days after Hope died. She became Billy Paul's babysitter is the story. Um, and she would be. Depending on which of William Branham's uh, birthdays is the right one, she would be between 10 and 13 years younger than William Branham. Um, and if you look at the pictures, uh, she I'll say she looks significantly younger than that um, in some of the pictures. She looks a, a good bit younger than him. Uh, but uh, when they got married, William Branham would have been in his 30s. She would have been, I think, 22. And so, you know, they, they had a significant age difference between them anyway. Um you know, through the years that he traveled a lot, I, I never, I never heard, a, really, I haven't heard a single bad thing about Sister Branham. Um, I heard only positive things. I heard her nerves were somewhat frayed. She was a bit of a nervous condition, right? Uh, so, which kind of comes with living in a, maybe a high pressure environment. 
Um, I've also, you know, noticed from, you know, the photographs and the pictures of her, you see that she is a, um, a well-dressed woman. Uh, she, she is, uh, she's definitely cutting her hair. <laughs> I'll say that from the pictures, right? You can tell from the pictures she is not certainly living the extreme, uh, end of the message, um, holiness rules. You could say it that way. And then, uh, from, from what I know after, uh, after William Branham died, um, yeah, she was not happy with the state of the message all the way for the rest of her life. She was not happy with, uh, what was going on at the Branham Tabernacle, uh, by a long shot. She, she and a faction of her family actually fellowship quite a bit with, with our church. Um, and as long as she was living, there was still somewhat peace between our church and our sect and the main sect there in the Branham Tabernacle. But after she died, uh, that's when the claws really came out between, uh, Raymond Jackson and your grandfather, uh, John. <laughs> but she was, she was in one sense, I feel like she was the reason that peace was maintained as long as it was, um, so, you know, there, there's that aspect. And again, some of this is just my opinion based on things I've heard. Um, so, you know, you might have a different opinion, someone else out there. I would also say, John, uh, based on everything I know and how unhappy she was supposed to be about the state of the message in the final years of her life, I think it's very fair to say that if Sister Branham was still living today, um, she would probably be with Sarah Branham, wherever Sarah Branham is. And she would not be, she would not be absolutely not around the main sect or any sect. I can't, if, I just can't see that myself. If she was, I mean, she'd be giving Joseph a spanking probably. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that would be my thoughts, John, on, uh, on, on Sister Branham. Yeah. <clears throat> and again, I try to avoid hearsay and opinion. It's evident from the photographs that the life that the family lived was not the same as the life that the stage persona presented <clears throat> you know if you there's one photograph in particular and i'll try to put it up on the video feed but these people were dressing with the latest fashions while william branham is heavily blasting anyone <laughs> who's dressing with the latest fashion fashions like you said the hair appears to have been a lot shorter than it should have been and you know the knees are uncovered the women are wearing dresses that are edging very closely towards a mini skirt the, in our our sect of the message charles if you showed your knees the minister would a actually rail you right in front of everyone who's in the audience and talk about how you were such a scandal of a woman <laughs> it was beyond a scandal skirt a scandal skirt in my sect of the message if you had a little slit in the back even if you're not even showing the calves of your leg it, it had to be a skirt that went down and the calves of your leg could not even be displayed because modesty they were trying to make this connection between skin but that's not the way <laughs> Mita Branham and William Branham's daughters live they wore skirts that actually showed the knees they they had s sleeves sleeveless tops and in my sect of the message if you showed your your um, shoulders, you are a harlot, you are a prostitute. <laughs> and I'm not going to go too far into that because I, I don't want to create any sort of conflict, but I will say that a lot of the doctrines that exist today come from the male side of that family. <laughs> and they know, they grew up with their sisters, they grew up with their mother, they know how it was, but they have found a means to manipulate and to control. And the way that you do this is the more weights of burden that you can stack upon the Christians and just create a overbearing religion that is legalism, hyper-legalism. That's, that's what these men create.